Jim. Watch. A number of new laws going into effect today. Among them, you get caught flicking a cigarette from your car. You now face a fine of not $100, $500 for flicking, yeah, for flicking a cigarette. Isn't that a bit much just to make a point? Number 663-1270, Jim Walsh, back in the hot seat. Yeah, it's hot in here. Air conditioning on the fritz again. Here we go. Well, I understand tomorrow it's cooling down. Well, that's good. But for today, the air conditioning, we have this automatic air conditioning system here. Every time it hits 90, it automatically breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just adorable? Okay. Jim Walsh here. Name of the show is Bizman Weekly on Super Talk 1270. New driving laws going into effect today, a number of them. The one uh, to focus on is this new fine for littering. No, it's not fine for littering in North Dakota, but you will get a fine for littering. 500 bucks. If you're caught flicking a cigarette butt, really, used to be 100 bucks. You would think that would be enough to get people's attention, but they decided that they're going to up the level to 500. Seems a bit extreme, don't you think? Seems very extreme. 663-1270. Here's the deal. Anyway, uh, there's some other laws going into effect today as well. Uh, uh, new laws about texting and driving. Uh, they're going to fine you 100 bucks if they uh, catch you doing it. If you're uh, playing around with your, your smartphone while you're driving, uh, they can pull you over now. If, if they see you do it, that's a, big key, that's a big key thing. And it will cost you 100 bucks. And there's another law taking in effect. Uh, taking effect if uh, children under the age of eight are not in a booster seat, you can get a ticket. Uh, they have to be taller than four foot nine or older than eight years old. Otherwise, got to be in a booster seat. So everybody be safe and uh, know the laws. Otherwise, you might get fined. But, but this $500 for littering, in particular with the cigarette thing, that, that, that's a bit much. I mean, $100, you're going to get most people's attention. $500 for a lot of people is pretty disastrous. Remember, there's a lot of people out there right now who are literally living from paycheck to paycheck. And if you throw a $500 fine at them, you're just going to wipe them out. You're just going to put them in all kinds of trouble, and they're going to come away uh, very resentful. It's not going to have the desired message. $100 is an inconvenience that will get their attention. $500, that's too much. Do you not agree with that assessment? Where do you stand on this? Number 663-1270. New driving law going into effect today. If you litter... Particularly, they're talking about the cigar- the thing with the cigarette butts. And yes, there is a drought going on. A lot of people will say, well, there's a drought, you know, they got to keep the, the dry conditions and the forest fires. Well, as an emergency temporary measure, it's one thing, but this is not designed for that. This is not something that's going to go away uh, as soon as the drought emergency is over. This is designed to be permanent. Permanent, permanent. I, I have trouble saying permanent. I get mixed up. Where was I? Oh yes. <laughs> this is another case of a law. It's feel good legislation. It's not really going to get the job done. You're just going to wind up hurting unnecessarily a lot of people who are not made of money like a lot of folks in the state legislature. When the people targeted don't have much in the way of money to begin with, you only create more problems and a sense of hopelessness. Those folks who are making the laws, a lot of them, 
can't really understand how difficult this kind of monetary bullying can be. And is it really going to work? There's evidence that it won't really work. Get more into that in a few minutes. But where do you stand on this? Imagine you flick a cigarette butt out your window and the cop happens to catch you. That's a key thing. They have to actually see you do it. And a lot of us think we're real sneaky about it. Is there a cop coming? Is there a cop car? That car behind us. Can that be a cop car? Yeah, I don't think it is. Okay. And out goes the butt. <laughs> and it turns out if this is a cop car, you get pulled over. And the cop, if he's in a really bad mood or if you give him a lot of guff, he's probably going to give you the fine, uh, the penalty. Five, $500 for littering. Isn't that a little bit out there to make the point here? 663-1270, Jim Walsh on Super Talk 1270, online at supertalk1270.com. Be right back. Right now, 74. Here, Sean Hannity, weekday afternoons on Super Talk 1270. Beginning today in North Dakota, anyone caught littering or disposing of cigarette butts improperly in wrong North Dakota highways will face a fine of $500. That's up from the previous fine of $100. How stupid is that? Very bad idea. Very bad. 663-1270. You tell me if you think likewise or you think otherwise. $500 for littering. It's not going to work. And you're just going to hit all the wrong people in the pocketbook. The people who can least afford it. 663-1270. Jim Walsh on Super Talk 1270. Also, supertalk1270.com. Uh, you can also listen on your iPhone, your smartphone, and your ever-loving droid with that great app from Town Square Media. It's called Radio Pup. It's free, and it's powered in Bismarck Mandan by CK Auto. Take a look at a state that tried something similar. In fact, they went even more extreme. The state of Illinois, the land of Lincoln. You remember Lincoln? Was that a town in North Dakota? Anyway, in Illinois, a few years ago, they decided they had enough of the butts on the highway. Get your butts off the highway. So they passed this law, raising the fine for littering, specifically cigarette littering, to $1,500, $1,500, and a misdemeanor for a first offense. And on the third violation, it gets all the way up to $25,000 fine, and it's considered a felony. You're a repeat offender. If you keep flicking them butts, you can be slapped with a felony in the state of Illinois. Some people think that's what we should do here. No, not good. First of all, you have to ask, how well does it work? How much of an effect has this really had? In the case of Illinois, it really didn't have much of an effect at all. According to a Fox News affiliate, Illinois State Police wrote very few citations statewide in the first three months of the law in 2014. Because the fact is, as is the case here, they can't ticket someone unless they see them toss a butt. The station reports two counties in Illinois issued no citations at all in the first three months. Now, with the litter law, they say the best hope is that the law is an effect it's a deterrent on its own. That's part of the idea here. Remains to be seen how well that works. It, it can be a deterrent to the cops. That we know. Because a lot of policemen, you know, police are, they're human beings too. They're, they're family men, family women. And it is a fact that uh, a lot of police... Well, they probably feel bad about issuing these high-cost tickets for what they consider to be a low-priority offense. 
But another measure of success, of course, is whether it actually does what it's supposed to do in decreasing the litter. Uh, It's probably too soon for the hard data, but the Alliance for Great Lakes is a group in the Illinois area. They do beach cleanups on Lake Michigan. They say they have not seen a downward trend in cigarette butt litter. The volunteers go out and they collect it. They have not seen any serious decrease since the law took effect. Uh, They don't have specific numbers, but uh, one spokesperson says the big picture is that the cigarette-related litter is still the top item overall that volunteers pick up at the beaches, even those that have the smoking bans. A lot of this, of course, comes out of the holy war against tobacco. And make no mistake about it, smoking is not a good thing. But again, as we have talked about previously with Breathe ND, which happily we no longer have in this state, they ran out of money, so they decided to close up shop, turn, uh, turn the whole enterprise over to uh, other departments. Their whole, their whole shtick, their whole, the whole thing with Breathe ND, of course, was smoking is icky. And, of course, there's nothing you can do that would be enough to uh, uh, stop smoking. It's all justified because if one person stops smoking, blah, 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 you know, all that kind of nonsense. I think if only one person stops smoking, I think it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, it's pretty pathetic when you think about it. Uh, if we can make only one person stop smoking, uh, oh, that's <laughs> that hasn't really worked, has it? No, it hasn't. Stop saying it has. Now, there are other ways to get the message across, and other states have tried, yeah, the whole Keep America Beautiful campaign, and that, in my mind, is where the real answer lies. It's in increasing awareness. You may remember back in the day in the 60s, it started early in the 60s during the Kennedy era, the whole campaign against littering, every litter bit hurts. They had a spokesperson, a little girl named Susan Spotless, and she would talk about how bad littering is. And the message got across to a lot of people. Education, as always, is the answer. Throwing ridiculous fines at people is not. Of course, there's always empowering the citizens, which is a nice way of saying encouraging people to rat on each other. Let's not go down that avenue again, please. So where do you stand on this? Uh, A fine for littering, if you get caught, particularly with the cigarette butts. Now, currently in North Dakota, we have an emergency situation. Technically, we are in a drought. And you notice as of last week, they're finally using the D word around these parts. Disaster. They call it a disaster area. I don't think the president has called it a disaster. I think he has too many disasters on his plate as it is. But here in the state of North Dakota, Governor Burgum did make the uh, make the call last week. He said North Dakota, the state of North Dakota is in a state of technical state of disaster. Yeah, they're finally using the D word. And that, of course, opens up a lot of options for assistance from the federal government and cooperation. Yada, 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 you know all about that. You could make a case that this kind of thing would be justified as an emergency stopgap temporary measure because it is so damn dry out there right now. A flicked cigarette in the wrong spot could mean a lot of trouble. Nobody's arguing that as a temporary emergency stopgap. But to put this in place with the idea of leaving it there, even if you have years like we had in, say, 2011, where everything was soaking wet back during the flood period. I'm not making a joke about the flood or anything, but what I'm saying is, as a permanent measure, is this really going to work? No, no, I don't think it is. Where do you stand on the issue? Love to hear from you on this. 663-1270. 663-1270. Again, new driving laws going into effect. Uh, of course, the constitutional carry thing, that goes into effect too today. You no longer need a permit to pack heat in the Peace Garden State. 
personally, I don't think that's going to have much of an impact, uh, given the kind of culture we have. You know, the people who are criminals, are uh, they, they, they never were, you know, it's like the old cliche, the ones who are criminals, they never bothered with the permits anyway. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. This, however, uh, we can have a problem with. New driving law, new littering fine, $500. There's a lot of people out there for whom $500 is a lot of money. Maybe you guys over there in the legislative hall, maybe $500 is peanuts for you. But for a lot of the working stiffs out there, for a lot of, for a lot of uh, the regular folks, $500 is a lot of damn money. And you find somebody $500 for flicking a cigarette. Isn't that a bit extreme to get your point across? Taking, uh, you know, some people, uh, their rent is $500 a month. So you're going to punish somebody by taking away their rent money, leaving them unable to pay their rent because of so many people living paycheck to paycheck, which is a whole different kettle of fish. We won't go there today, but the point is they are doing that. They are living that way. And if you take away $500 for something as really insignificant as this, I don't get it. Let's grab a call here. Good morning. You're on Super Talk 1270. Yeah, I just had a comment on your uh, uh, your uh, littering thing. Absolutely, sir. Go right ahead. Okay. As we speak, I'm driving out to pick up a whole bunch of crap that some jerk uh, was driving down a county road and figured out oh, here here's a kind of a side road nobody goes down right and there's a great big bunch of junk there and um <clears throat> you know we used to and and are you going to come and help me pick that up it'll take me all afternoon and uh <laughs> okay. right now i'm pulling a trailer behind my truck so that's what it's going to take to pick up that crap now to me 500 bucks is not enough for that kind of a thing I have no comment on the cigarettes. I think that's probably a little overkill, but but yeah, you're hammering that. Uh, but uh, we used to live out east of uh, east of Bismarck, and it was amazing the stuff that people threw out there. They threw out couches, deep freezers, old fridges, and and uh, you could see where people would drive out in somebody's private property and change their oil and leave the oil filter and all the oil stuff there. It's People, uh, people like that are slobs, and as far as I'm concerned, heck, 500 bucks. That's uh, if they can't afford it, they damn well better or not to do it. I appreciate I your input. No comment on cigarettes. Okay, I appreciate your call, sir. I sincerely do. Thank you very much. So, do you think 500 dollars is appropriate for littering? To me, it seems a bit much. Maybe you think otherwise, like that fellow. I invite you. To weigh in, 663-1270. Super Talk 1270, supertalk1270.com, and Jim Walsh, and you. More of your calls coming up. Right now, 74. Dave Ramsey is heard here. Super Talk 1270. $500, $500 fine for littering. Effective today in North Dakota. Is that a bit much? Number 663-1270. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on Super Talk 1270. Um, I just want to take in, I agree with the previous caller. You do. It's a choice. You do not have to throw your garbage or your cigarette butts out the window. It's so simple. Okay. So $500, in my opinion, is not a problem. If anything, it's probably higher. Don't do it. Okay. Well, the thing is, like I say, there's a lot of people out there. You find them $100, you are going to get their attention. You find them $500, you're going to wipe them out. You're not going to wipe them out. They have a choice not to turn the damn thing but out the window. So the rest of us have to go drive by it, pick it up, clean it. No, they have a choice. They don't have to do it. And $500 wipe them out, that's their choice. They chose to do it. So it, it, I don't think 500 is too much. All right. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Thank you. 663-1270. Oh, we have a difference of opinion. Oh, <laughs> oh how quaint. No, uh, b- back to the issue at hand here. $500. What I'm saying is that $100 it sounds reasonable to me. $500, it's a bit excessive to me. For one, I mean, think about this. Think about the physics of this. One cigarette butt. You flick one cigarette butt out the window a $500 fine? 
And it, it, it doesn't add up for me. For all the things that people do for which they probably should get a 500. I'm not saying they shouldn't find them anything. Never said, I never said that. What I'm saying is 500 is a bit much. That's all. 663-1270. Jim Walsh here on Super Talk 1270. I got to talk about um, the age discrimination thing. It came up again. And, of course, on a radio station like this, a lot of folks, a lot of folks who listen to a, a station like this, they tend to be uh, a little bit older. Uh, they tend to be uh, maybe uh, the boomers, maybe some of the older generation Xers. And there was a story it came out of Iowa about a fellow who wanted to uh, be part of a. Uh, let, me, let me pull the story up here. He was a writer. And he wanted to get in on this writing workshop. And they turned him down. Well, after they found out what his age was, it just so happened they turned him down. He's 68 years old. And apparently this is a regular thing, this guy says. If you look at these writing workshops and these awards for great writers of tomorrow, they generally give them out to the younger guys. And it brings up the whole question again of age discrimination. I do want to get to that in just a moment here. Good morning. You're on Super Talk 1270. Yes, sir. Good morning. Hey, how are you I doing? Co- I got a comment about your uh, cigarette uh, issue there. All right, let me have it. <laughs> All right. Uh, when I, I was uh, drafted in the Army, and when we uh, had to pull our uh, daily duties, we had to go out and pick up them cigarette butts and uh, pick them up whether you smoked them or not. And yeah. uh, if you didn't police the area and come back with at least a coffee can full of cigarette butts, they sent you out again. Right. So I had a real distaste for cigarette butts. And uh, you especially notice it in the cities at a stop sign. Some of these guys feel it's their responsibility to dump their ashtrays right at the stop sign on the street. Well, that is ridiculous. And, yeah, and it, it, it's just disgusting. And the other thing is, if you can afford to smoke what the price of a pack of cigarettes is today, you can certainly afford a fee that will get your attention to maybe not throw it out the window. Put, put a five-gallon bucket of water in your car and throw your butts in there and, and carry them around till you get to a dipsy dumpster someplace. So, that, that's my solution. So you think 500 is not out of, uh, out of line? No, I don't think it's out of line uh, if you're having trouble making rent, maybe you shouldn't be smoking. Thank you for your call, sir. You Th- bet. All right. Take care. All right. 663-1270. Talking about the fine for smoking uh, specifically, uh, and it goes into effect today here in North Dakota, along with a lot of other laws. It's August the 1st, and that's when uh, these laws kick in. The new fine for littering in the state of North Dakota, $500. And you're driving along the interstate right about now, and you're sitting there, you're puffing away on that uh, on a little cancer stick there, and you're thinking, gee, is there a cop behind me? That car behind me, could that be a cop car? Well, it kind of looks like one of those uh, off-duty, plainclothes uh, uh, Chrysler uh, or the Dodge Darts that the uh, state police used to drive. Uh, but could it really be a police car? Because if I throw this butt out, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah, I know. I know you're thinking that. I know you're doing it. And I've been in cars with guys like that. They, they, they're puffing away, and all of a sudden they go, hey, look behind us. What? 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 That car behind us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that look like a police car? Well, I don't know. There's no thing on the top. You know, no, no bubble siren, bubblegum machine thing on top. I, I don't see it. I don't know if it's a cop. I don't know if it's a police car or not. Okay, I just wanted to know so I could fl- uh, flick my butt out. Okay, dude, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we all know somebody like that. All right, 663 1270. Jim Walsh on Super Talk 1270. Supertalk 1270.com. Uh, a couple of quick things here. Uh, fellow writing, a colleague had an interesting experience uh, the threat of jail time because her driveway has cracks in it. Okay, that's not exactly what we're talking about here. But, yeah, the idea of excessive fines, just to kind of make a point, 
uh, is the question here, 663-1270. You're also welcome to comment anytime. You know, we've got a Facebook site, Super Talk 1270, KLXX. It's on your Facebook page. And uh, you can also uh, call in right now if you like, 663-1270. And I want to talk more about this uh, age discrimination thing because, you know... You know, we're a bunch of geezers here at the radio station. Well, some of us are. And it kind of affects us a little bit. So we'll get to that in a second here. Is age discrimination a real thing in North Dakota and elsewhere? Talk about it in just a few here on Super Talk 1270 and supertalk1270.com. Hang in there. Super Talk 1270, supertalk 1270.com. Beginning today in North Dakota, anyone caught littering? It's a $500 fine. 500 bucks for littering. Does anyone think that's a bit much to make a point? Just say it, just say it, just say it. 663-1270. Only a few days left to uh, use the public pools in Bismarck for the summer season. Yeah, it's April 1st. Summer's winding down. Uh, School's starting in just a couple of weeks now. Uh, kind of sad to think about it, but no, winter isn't that close. Not yet. But just so you know, uh, the last day for, uh, the Wachter pool is August 11th. Last day for the Elks Aquatic Center, August 13th. Hillside is going to be open until the 20th. And you can get all the information uh, from Bismarck Parks through, uh, supertalk1270.com. All right. Uh, I want to talk about this, um, age discrimination thing. Here's the deal. From Iowa, a guy applied to the Iowa Writers Workshop, which apparently is a very prestigious thing. And he got rejected, and he says it's because of his age. He's 68 years old. Now, obviously, the program denies that there's any kind of uh, ageism going on, and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But as noted, Over the past five years, nobody over the age of 51 has been accepted, and almost half of those who were accepted are between 18 and 25. Young uh, young whippersnappers, you know. Uh, Get off my lawn. Go get a job. Now, if that's the plan, you would think that the program organizers (laughs) might want to change the wording a little bit, aspiring well, just say young, you know, just just say young writers. Everybody can be cool, but no, it says aspiring writers. And it doesn't say anything to everybody. You have to be young. And the question is, well, there's a couple of questions here, actually. Is there this kind of, is there really age discrimination going on in our society today, like here in North Dakota? And should you be cut off from aspiring to do something, especially a creative endeavor, because you're too old? Don't want to sound like Paul Harvey here, but there's always stories about people who started late in life and accomplished something great. Uh, Colonel Sanders springs to mind. I don't know uh, what you... (laughs) Well, I think think the chicken is great. I think that's something great. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's finger looking good. You know, Colonel Sanders, he he actually started out with that business. He was close to retirement age already. Uh, Grandma Moses started late in life. But, you know, we do have a we do have kind of a youth oriented culture and we have for a lot of years now. I really think number six, six, three, twelve, seventy. I really think rock and roll has a lot to do with it because let's face it. Rock and roll is a young man's game or a young woman's game and rock and roll. If you don't make your first million, if you don't have your first three million sellers by the time you're 21, you're considered over the hill. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to look at you. How many times have you heard a story of a 40-year-old guy going up to a record exec and having the guy go, yeah, I like your music. We're going to give you a record deal. Yeah, it doesn't happen. It's all about the youth, which is probably one reason why there are so many... So many people in rock and roll die young, and I'm not making a joke. Actually, it's a serious thing. You look at uh, the mortality record for drugs and plane crashes and car crashes and whatever in rock and roll, it's because 
it attracts people who are very young. It attracts the child prodigies of our society. Child prodigies, unfortunately, tend to be very screwed up people socially. They tend to have trouble adjusting to life in the real world. And they tend to get in trouble. I'm thoroughly convinced. Uh, you look at all the uh, some of the uh, great stories of rock and roll, especially the people who died young, the uh, the not so much John Lennon, he was murdered, but you look at what happened with the Beatles with all their issues. They were all very young guys when they started out. And they were making a lot of the kinds of mistakes that you make when you're young and brilliant. Elvis, too, for that matter. The ones who work out, the ones who survive and uh, seem to be okay, they, if anything, they seem to be the exception. But there is this youth fixation in this society. But the question, that's not the same as saying that there's age discrimination. But I tell you, I know a lot of people who are right around my age. I'm 61 now. I know a lot of people in my general age group who are out of work, who have had all kinds of trouble finding a decent job. And, of course, they never say it's it's because you're old. They never say that. But you got to wonder. you got to wonder if that's an issue. You really do. 663-1270. Is there ageism? Is there age discrimination in North Dakota? 663-1270. 1270. I mean, look, a lot of guys don't really get their second wind until they hit a certain age. Look, I'm 61. I consider myself right now, no joke, to be in the prime of life. Maybe not physically, but in terms of, uh, let's just say that I, I consider myself to be very much the man that I aspired to be when I was younger, okay? It took me this long, but finally got there. You're probably in the same boat. If you're around my age, you may be in the same boat. You know, being 61, being a 60, 50 or 60 or even beyond, uh, it, it's not, it shouldn't be the stigma that it used to be because people are living healthier, healthier, they're not smoking or drinking or not doing it as much. People are exercising, they're getting more active, they're living better. You know, older folks still have a lot to contribute. But it seems like if you're past a certain age, it is really hard to get a gig. Or is that just me? <laughs> you tell me, 663 1270. Uh, one, one other thing I want to pass along here as uh, we're winding down. You know, uh, Scaramucci, 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 he never did get to do the Fandango, but he, uh, he lost his gig. He, quote, resigned, unquote. Of course, who knows what really happened in uh, the current administration. <laughs> it's anybody's guess. But this Scaramucci guy, uh, known for his Uh, rather salty vocabulary. He lasted all of 10 days, and then he was out the bleeping door. Came across a great article from uh, the old gray lady, the New York Times, the case for cursing, saying that there's really nothing wrong with cursing. The article says this, uh, considering that the only reason people curse, oh, the only reason that curse words are considered curse words it's because at some point somebody decided that they were. It's like George Carlin said. And he got all these words, and somebody in charge somewhere along the way went, now these words over here, these are bad words. Okay, dude, whatever. And using those words, when you stub your toe, I mean, let's face it, as a comedian once said, when the President of the United States, no matter who he is, when he stubs his toe... You don't expect him to go, oh, my goodness, I stubbed my toe. (laughs) Well, George W. No, George W. Now, George W., you would not believe this, but George W. had a pretty salty vocabulary, people said, uh, in private. Now, he could, uh, you know, he could blew the air with the best of them. 
Yeah, really. And the thing is, it is kind of a, a catharsis. It does kind of help you with your pain, your discomfort. And there is apparently some science behind that. Same thing for uh, swearing or cussing. By the way, is there a difference? Is there a difference between swearing and cussing? Damned if I know. Hell, crap. I uh, well, like if you're swearing while lifting weights. Some people do that. They go, crap, boom, and they, and, and they get the weight up. It seems to help some people. And there are times, of course, when a curse word is better for communicating a thought than any other word. So, someone tells you to stop swearing, uh, you know what you can tell them to do with themselves, right? Yeah. Tell them to go and jump up something sideways, right? Now, maybe you better not. Eh? Just saying. But it's in the New York Times. I like their crosswords. I never have a crossword for anybody. Eh. Your comments welcome. Supertalk1270.com. Jim Walsh, enjoy hearing from you very much. Thanks for listening. Supertalk 1270.